We are very excited and honored to have Dr. Uh, William Chapman Yaho here with us and thankful also for Pianospheres and our partnership with them and their generosity in sharing Dr. Nyaho's time with us and bringing him here to our school. Dr. Nyaho is a fellow. He's been doing a lot of workshops um, here in the LA area over the last couple of weeks, did interviews at the radio yesterday. Um, and he particularly also works with unusual or perhaps lesser known composers, particularly of the African diaspora. He's gonna talk a little bit about his work, about his research and the repertoire that he explores and then later we'll do a, a master class and a teaching moment with some of our students. Um, thank you, Piano Spheres, for your uh, partnership, and thank you, Dr. Nyaho, for your time here with us as well. We're very excited, and without further ado, Dr. Nyaho. Well, thank you so much for being here, and it's a real honor and pleasure to come and play for you. Um, and I also want to thank Pianospheres for uh, arranging to have me come here. And I just wanted to just give a little bit of uh, my background. I'm originally from Ghana, West Africa, and uh, grew up, I pretty much grew up there, went to, high, uh, to primary and high school there, and then went to the University of Oxford um, in England to study music where um, it was more theory and harmony and counterpoint which is very important for all of us and then I spent a year in Switzerland um, getting back into playing the piano and then I went to a really cool school in Rochester New York called the Eastern School of Music that I hope some of you may actually end up at and then I uh, got my doctorate um, in music performance from the University of Texas at Austin. So, um, so that's kind of my educational background. And then um, I actually became a visiting artist in North Carolina and did a lot of playing for schools and for concerts. And it was just really fun and a really good way to sort of get used to performing all the time. And then uh, came a professor in Louisiana, and then I'm now in Seattle. But I think one of um, the things that I wanted to bring to you as um, pianists is just the fact that there's all this great music out there. And I'm going to play you a few pieces um, that you may not have heard of, but from different parts of, of the African continent and the African diaspora. What do I mean by the African diaspora? The diaspora meaning where people from the African continent ended up, you know, and you know, when people are taken from one place to another, they take their music with them. And so the music ends up, you know, influencing what is in the other place. So you're going to have Afro-Cuban music, you're going to have Afro-Brazilian music, going to have um, um, Jamaican music that has got influences of African music, even in America and in England and in, in Europe as well. So um, I'm going to play you a little bit of stuff and then, you know, we can have some uh, questions and answers and, uh, and then I would, I'm just so thrilled to be hearing through of you play for me and uh, and I will give you some suggestions and hope I can inspire you to keep practicing and practice hard and and just uh, become a beacon of art and music in your world and spread good news and all that kind of wonderful stuff to your audiences as well so Okay, so um, one of the things I did as a musician growing up in Ghana, I, I learned a lot about Bach and Beethoven, Chopin. I'm sure some of you are playing that. And, um, but I also grew up enjoying traditional African music. And so uh, one, things, one of the things I did 
was uh, learn how to dance, the different dances from the different parts of Ghana. And so um, I really got into traditional African music. As I was going through school, it was, there was one thing I wanted to find out a way to, in a way, bring those two parts of my identity, you know, together. And it was really interesting that much later on I came to discover music, you know, lots of great compositions by composers of African descent. Has anybody heard of Florence Price here? Okay. Yes. Well, Florence Price is an African American composer who is only now getting her symphonies being heard, you know, some fabulous symphonies. And even last year, um, her, one of her symphonies um, and the performances, recordings, were, won a Grammy. And this year again, another uh, concerto for piano uh, won a Grammy. So, um, and her music was just discovered in a dilapidated house. It was an abandoned house, and some people were going to tear down this place and saw, you know, these boxes of scores, and they finally, you know, um, took it to a library in Arkansas, and Florence Price, you know? So I, um, another person that uh, was uh, really influenced by Florence Price, and who Florence Price taught was a wonderful composer by name Margaret Bonds. And Margaret Bonds, um, it's probably best known for her uh, Negro spiritual arrangements that the great divas and opera singers sing, you know. But she wrote some really cool piano music. And one of the pieces I'm going to play is, uh, is actually from a set of pieces called um, Spiritual's Suite. And... Uh, I think I am going to play a, I'm going to play you Peter Goring the Bells. So there's a Negro spiritual called uh, Peter Goring the Bells. Peter Goring the Bells. Peter Goring the Bells. Peter, go ring down bells I heard from heaven today. And it's um, just a beautiful piece. And Margaret Barnes just kind of has these wonderful right hand lines that kind of, you know, just the, the way they are produced, it sounds like bells. Okay. And so I'm going to play this piece without talking too much because I know we have a lot of wonderful music to hear as well, but I thought I would play you this really cool piece. Okay.
one of the pieces that uh, it was just got to learn. And, you know, Margaret Barnes had three of them um, that she had written as a set. But when she passed away, only one of them was really published. And it was so hard to kind of get these other two um, published. But they've just recently been released. And so I just thought, instead of playing the more popular one, I would try and play you um, the one which is just freshly um, published. So that's kind of more new music to our ears. And then um, I thought I'll play you maybe something from two pieces by Caribbean composers. Okay, so I'm going to play um, a really cool piece by a teacher of mine, a former teacher of mine, because I'm sure you have some beloved teachers here who are also composers. And I had a wonderful teacher by name, also Russell, who was also a composer. And I studied the improvisation with him. And uh, it was just wonderful. And he could play these big concerts, which would start with Mozart sonatas, and then you know, they would conclude with a jazz piece. And then maybe as an encore, you know, he'll ask the audience to name a tune and then he would improvise a, an amazing tune. Well, this piece is called Jamaican Dance Number no. 2. And it's actually taken from a Jamaican folk song called Sammy Dead. And it's a very beautiful piece. And so if anybody has um, ties to Jamaica um, and you sing this piece, most Jamaicans will know it. But I think it's just a pretty pretty piece and hope one of you will take it up. This is a piece that I really think is very cool. 
and is by a Cuban composer by name Tania Leon. And Tania Leon just recently was honored at the Kennedy Center with a presidential award and uh, she's written a lot of symphonic music and but this one is taken from uh, she says uh, this piece in, was inspired by her childhood memories and as growing up and hearing the rhythms from uh, Cuba and the tumbao is a really kind of fun dance form and one of the uh, uh, rhythms that uh, is very common in Cuba is this. Can you all clap that for me? Ready? And. There we go. Now this, that, that rhythm is really cool because you even hear it in music from my father's part of Ghana and also the central part of Ghana is a dance form and you even hear it in different parts of West Africa but uh, this is um, found its way into Cuba and she uses it like a drumming piece so you're going to hear this and if any um, of you are interested there are going to be times where there are these silences and you have to like really count like crazy because you know they're just it just kind of uh, so throws you off kilter and it's really fun. So here is Tumbao by Tanya Leon. thought maybe we can if you have any questions we can have a very quick you know uh, little question and answer moment and then um, I'd love to hear you play for me
Any questions? Yes? When did Margaret Bonds and Florence Price live? Um, uh, Margaret Bonds um, lived in the early part of the 1900s, and she died in, I think, like 50, in the 50s. And Margaret Bond, uh, Florence Price was a little older than her, and she uh, was born in the late 1800s and died um, in the 1900s. But you know what's interesting was that um, they, they were really important musicians. So Florence Price was the first African-American to have her symphonies performed by the uh, Chicago Symphony Orchestra. And, you know, very early on when it wasn't a done thing. And then Margaret Barnes, who was a phenomenal pianist, was the first African-American to play a concerto with a symphony, a uh, major symphony orchestra. So um, they're really beacons of light for us, you know, in the early part of the 1900s. Yes, thank you. Yes? Um, would you like to talk a little bit about Oh, these, yes. So I'm going to say, yes. So, um, yeah, so one of the things, um, let me show you these books. So, um, these are books that I was able to have published, uh, and they're published by Oxford University Press. And it's Piano Music of Africa and the African Diaspora. And one of the reasons how this, this series came, up, came by was I was a professor, and um, it was very easy to find music by Bach and Beethoven for my students, because I had to teach them about different pieces, you know, from from the world, you know. And it was easy to find Bach, Mozart, whatever. Spanish music was really easy to find. You know, some South, Af um, South American music was okay to find, you know, accessibility. But when it came to music by composers of African descent, it was really hard. Or even from, and, you know, coming from the African continent, it was almost impossible. Um, and some of the music was also published um, earlier on and was out of print. So if you were trying to look for music by Florence Price, you couldn't find it. So um, I gave a little presentation at um, a music teacher's conference and um, Oxford University Press was there and they said, well, we'd love to do a project with you. So I came out with these um, five volumes and they're kind of graded so that um, I have some really cool pieces by Ghanaian composers, Nigerian, South African, Congolese composers, Egyptian composers, and then, you know, it just gets a little bit more difficult. And then volume three, for example, the piece I played by Ozzo Russell is in volume three. So, you know, Thank you for asking, but these are really kind of cool pieces if you're looking for music to diversify your repertoire um, and, you know, check out music by composers of African descent. This is something, you know, you can use as a resource and then look and go online and find more about composers you're really interested in. And so this is being donated to uh, Spheres and uh, for their library. And so, yeah. Any other questions? Um, from yes. the, uh, I just learned that the tumbao in the, the clapping yes. is from Africa. I yeah. didn't know that, but I recognize it from, from the Latin music. Yes. Which part of the, which Latin music is, you identify more, having more of the African roots. Yeah, so, um, so you know, one of that, you know, that rhythm also is, is also called clave. I don't know whether you've heard that term, clave. But um, this, this comes, um, so music by um, um, people from um, 
the central part of Ghana use this as a dance form and um, I, there's a piece I play you know I've recorded that has that rhythm and then you're also going to hear all of, um, in all different kinds of um, in Central and, and South American music too yeah did that answer your question? Yeah, I found it very interesting. Like artists like Mark Anthony, uh -huh. um, they do have that rhythm. Oh well, yeah. Um, like um, Celia Cruz. Yes. Yes. Like yeah, and you know, um, it finds its roots in, um, but I would say particularly West African music and you know taken across into cuba and into the you know into the islands and elsewhere oh yeah so um and i'm sure you may even be interested in you know letting us you know would you like to tell us a little bit about maybe some of the afro-brazilian rhythms or music um, Not to put you on the spot, yeah, but... I mean, but of course there's a lot of dialogue as Brazil was also one of the countries where a lot of Africans came to, and yes. that, that language, the rhythmic structure and the patterns influenced, you will find in music by composers such as Vila Lobos and Guarnieri and Carlos Santoro, yes. that they mix all of those elements. Brazil was still also highly influenced by Europe, so yes. It's kind of interesting to see that in terms of form and style, music was following European standards. But so to speak, in terms of ingredients, it was something very native to Brazilian indigenous music, but also to African music. Yeah. You can find it there too. Yes. Let's, let's have this master class. Let's do it. And um, so, what is a master class? A master class is, is for you to take the opportunity to play for me as a teacher and so when I, my role here is to see what you're doing and encourage you to do more okay and I will be asking your beloved fans and your adoring fans maybe yeah can you hear that and they'll probably say yeah that's even better more 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 okay so that um, Master classes are for me to help you, you know, give you some different information. You can take it, you don't have to take it, but usually they're good suggestions. And also you can, um, you can also, if you're not the one playing, you can also write notes because hopefully I'll be giving you some information that you can use for your own piano playing too, okay? So this is um, something that I want you to come out. I want you to play your heart out. And um, we're just going to have a fun time here. Okay? Warren. Sit in the audience for the actual performance. So we're going to do musical chairs. <laughs>
tell me what this piece means to you. Can you, can you tell me um, what an impact, what kind of an impact you want to make with this piece? Um, What's your story? Well, I think the title means uh, from an old garden. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's really melancholy. Yes. And I think just bringing those feelings through would be yeah. horrible. Um, with all the harmonies and everything, weird right. dissonances. So. Great. Yeah. And um, I felt that. I felt that your the balance and what you what you were trying to put out was just absolutely glorious, you know, really trying to you know create different levels of um, texture in this piece, and I just thought it you know you had a really good sense of what you wanted to do with it. So, um, I felt in a way maybe you could do more with that. Like really, even though you have um, a melody which says piano, maybe it could sort of project a bit more, okay. right? And also, I felt maybe you could use more pedaling okay. in this piece. I think it could be a little bit more lush. Okay. But you know, one thing it did which was just absolutely uh, wonderful was that you put the pedal down first before you started. And do you know why you did that? I think it's just a, an instinct. Like an instinct. Well, you know something, sometimes, you know, for pieces like that, you want to put the pedal down so that the strings are kind of ready to vibrate, mm -hmm. so that your very first note has that beautiful sound. So I just wanted to commend you on that. Thank you. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's start again. I want more tops. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so um, for for that for that first phrase, I feel that there needs to be a little bit of a goal. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? Because the harmony is changing there, and I think um, you could you could really direct your phrase a little bit more than then come back off. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Let's try that. So that way, basically, you have the sense of directing to there and then giving me a little bit more sound because um, Le Boulanger wanted this to kind of like, you know, so just uh, fade away. Mm -hmm. So, so you can create more, I want even more okay. contrast with the way you're treating those phrases. sense of melancholy and sort of it still has to be have a little bit of drama in it okay. yeah mm -hmm. let's try that from the, the thirds Is that the 
end of your sentence there? Musical mm. sentence. Mm. You're the artist. I, I think that's the end of the, of the phrase. That's the end of the phrase. Could, do you think maybe um, you could project that s sense of resolution there? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit more resolution because she writes plus vite, mm -hmm. which means a little faster for the next phrase. Do you see what I mean? So it's almost implying that she wants you to kind of settle there. Mm -hmm. So can I have a little bit more of that? It's really good. And do you know what? So can you hear these amazing harmonies she's, um, she's playing? Can can you make them even more meaningful in terms of the way you time them? Mm -hmm. I heard you doing a bit of that, and so I'm latching onto that. I want more. Okay. That's what master class is all about. I want more, more, more. We're just greedy mm -hmm. for more. So even more. Okay. Let's try that. <laughs> We have a big accelerando, it says, and crescendo all the way to your goal. Okay? It's all about goals, guys. It's all about goals. Let's do it. Give me a certain hierarchy, though, of all your favorites. 
<laughs> okay. So I think I think I think with this piece which has all these amazing melodies and harmonies, you know, maybe a certain you know, and you're just playing this with so much love that maybe there needs to be some which need to be played with extra TLC. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Perhaps, perhaps maybe this one, you know, this really, this is kind of one of the lowest chords, you know, maybe a little bit more bass. Okay. You know, you're the artist, or maybe more left hand thumb. You know, when all of you are playing chords, make sure that you, each note of a chord is is never the same as the other notes. You know, there always has to be one one note in a chord that needs to be really special and needs to be brought out, or you know, direct our ears to the that favorite note. You see what I mean? And maybe I think I, I wanted a little bit more of that in terms of color. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know I have only five minutes, but um, left. So let's go on. But I, you know, the whole idea is to encourage you to just play more. What you're doing, even more of. I'm liking. It. Okay. So, so where should we go from? Uh, okay. okay. seems to be kind of something that maybe you could bring out. You want to try that and see? a repetition. Your repetitions should never be the same. Okay? Mm -hmm. Is this more intense? I think that needs to be more intense. And maybe give me more thumb, a heavier thumb. Ba -da 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 -da. Okay? One more time. And then we'll finish it. I didn't hear this the first time around, you know, and I think it really sort of 
helps mm -hmm. ground us and get us to the end of the piece. When you have these chords, these chords are kind of telling us, okay, we're coming to the end. Mm -hmm. And so maybe one good way of timing, when you're playing an ending chord, before your last chord, just say, and. And somehow the time is just going to be really perfect. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, because the rest of your audience is wanting to go, they're still going at the same tempo, but you just kind of say, and, and they're like, oh, they all settle down with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's something I want you to consider. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for playing. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. having as much fun as I am. Okay. Jacob.
for having <laughs> been running all around you trying and I was and it's a very it's a very uh, stressful situation for me as a page turner. <laughs> so um, good job, good job. Let me see, let me see what I can put this back in order. Okay, so can you tell me all about a tarantella? So uh, it's like a dance, like it, it's like you need it from Spain. So like back then they used to believe that if you got bitten by a by a tarantula, they, yes. you would dance and then like and the poison would like go away. Exactly. Very good. I love it when the students know all about what you know, what they're playing, or they have a storyline and all that sort of stuff. And so I really think he brought that kind of energy. I we need to dance this poison out of this, you know, this tarantula bite. Okay? And I think he did a fabulous job of it. And well, barring my kind of distracting you and moving music all over the place. So One of the things I want to um, suggest in this piece is about what we call layering your textures. Okay, what do I mean by that? In this piece of music, you have all that running a and then there's also melody, you know, like in the second section. Where is it? It's coming up right. So at the moment, I cannot hear you separate out the melody from all your running notes and your bass line. Okay, so sometimes you have to be kind of a little bit calculating about this. What kind of dynamic marking do you intend to have right here for the melody which has these quarter note things stems going up right and then about your your eighth notes and then your left hand so which is going to be the loudest about the top the top one so you, what are you going to what are you going to assign it are you going to assign it a forte, a mezzo forte, or what? Maybe like, um, maybe like a piano, because that's the note that's like supposed to stand out. Yeah, but even though it says pianissimo, I would say closer to mezzo forte. Because one thing you're going to find out is when you're playing a lot of music with lots of textures, you know, and the composer is asking you to play something pianissimo. Make sure that your melody is almost forte because everything behind it and around it is going to give the quiet feel. Do you see what I mean? So it's kind of a, an illusion or something like that. So I want, I want this much louder, but I want this pianissimo. Okay. How are we going to do this? We have to do it slowly first. So can you kind of play that melody? I'm hearing your, your two and one a little bit louder than I would really want it to be. Okay, can I, can I show what I'm looking for? I'm looking for, if I can see. You hear that? Yeah. You know how different that is? Do you see how? So what I'm doing is I'm actually using more arm weight for that for that top note. My little finger is being played with my whole arm. Do you see? So as we get out, do you see what it? Let's try. 
try that. So really separate, separate those two things. Let's try that. Articulated. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Kind of let. I know this is going to sound crazy, but feel your little finger, your first knuckle. Okay. If you want a nice projected sound on a piano, sometimes use your first knuckle, you know, and just kind of create a little bit more tension and traction on the keys. And then use more of the pad of your second finger and your thumb. So can you just try that? Just the right hand, just the right hand. you're not using circles you're not using your wrist enough do you see what I mean more more flexibility of your wrist you see I'm, I know my hands are big but I'm just kind of this is what I'm doing okay so that I'm giving more power and more weight to my little finger can we just try that which is good now add a little bit more weight to that first note in the right hand ah, are you, is, are, is your adoring public hearing the difference are you beginning yeah. to hear a bit more of the difference yes do you see what I mean yeah. and that's something I want you to kind of like um, take time on you know don't do it too fast yet because it's very easy to kind of play fast and then we don't get the actual balance we want okay so be um, be uncompromising in that sense okay so can I just hear forte actually do you know what you can do you can even play exercises to help you create that sound but sometimes just thinking of heavy light heavy light heavy light heavy and make sure you connect them on oh, the music okay so I, I don't want to get stuck on that section but you see it will help you it'll, I mean it'll just bring it out a little bit more which I think will be fabulous okay now even here can I have more tops? Ba -da -da. Yeah, but even lighter with your left hand. With more right hand. Yeah, do you see what I mean? I, and so make sure that your left hand also is much lighter. Okay, so let's go from Let's go from here. Let's play all of this. Remember your left hand. Keep it nice and light. Okay, let's see.
section, all of that section, I think you should just play it slowly. Do you know what? Even if I can play things really fast, right? Do, so, are you going to confess to me that you're a speed demon? Sometimes, yeah. I think I busted you here. <laughs> You know, we all like to play so fast, you know. But, um, so I want to plead with you. Or, you know, take this to your teacher and say, I am going to play this super slowly. Like, it's a very slow dance. Okay? But trying to create more arm weight and then light. You know, and I think it's something that... I have to do all the time. I have to go, I have to play slowly all the time because I find that my, you know, if I go too fast, my fingers aren't always responding exactly to what I want them to do. You know, so I have to kind of bring them under control from that point of view and say, okay, you are going to do this, you're going to do that. You see what I mean? Yeah. And that's the joy of practicing. Do you like to practice? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes good. <laughs> I, you know, I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't like to practice. But um, I found out that maybe one of the ways we can enjoy practicing is not to play things the same way all the time or try to, you know. So why don't you kind of like say, okay, I'm just going to play the top line and I'm just going to play the bass line. And I'm going to leave all those inner triplets out of the way for a while. And then I'm going to play the bottom line and then just these two. And then I'm going to add the top. And that way to you, you're going to have so many wonderful ways to practice. It will take a lot of time, but it's going to be a blast. Okay? So, you know... I'm, I, I want have have faith that it's gonna be okay. All right. Okay. So, can we get back to this section again when you come here? <laughs> To the bar, the second beat of the bar may be a little bit lighter. Bom, ba, bom, ba, bom, ba, ba. You know, so um, it's hard to see. You see, can you can you make these instead of you're kind of making them kind of a little even, you know? Accents there, so make these lighter. So we can almost find that we are having a different line going. Do you want to try that? And, and just 
that um, you 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 um, pedal uh, you pedal these chords through a little bit more. You know, it, it could be a little cleaner. Let's do the very last section. making sure that you're yeah. you're creating different layers you know of dynamics in on a vertical sense okay brilliant I look forward to hearing more thank you. okay thank you and we finally have
You're for playing too. Everybody is just kind of great kind of stuff going on here. So tell me three things you loved about your playing. I love how the emotion that can be brought from the piece mm -hmm. changes and it sometimes it's juxtaposed, sometimes it's um, more uh, up to the um, audience or the um, artist to, to interpret what that emotion is. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that's beautiful about this piece is how much emotion you can pack into it. Uh, Claire de Lune is uh, Moonlight in French and uh, Claude Debussy got the name from a, a title of a poem from a group of poems that was called Bergamas. So he called the suite, which this is included in, Sweet Bergamas, mm -hmm. and this is Moonlight. And Moonlight is often associated with emotion, especially like melancholy mm -hmm. um, and uh, romance. So mm -hmm. it's really interesting how uh, Debussy can uh, have so much emotion uh, to be brought out in mm -hmm. different ways. Mm -hmm. Good. And, and I want to know what you loved also about your play. It's so important. Sometimes I like to just throw this question out because I feel sometimes we have lessons, right? And it's you can do this better, you can do that better, you can do this better, you can do day in a day out. And sometimes we as teachers forget to tell you, you know, what beautiful stuff you're doing and how you liked your own play. You know what I mean? So, I, I love your explanations, but tell me, did you love the way you were playing? Did you love the way the music brought that emotion out in you that you could project it to? I do like, but I don't love. You do like, but you don't. Okay, good. At least you do. Do you know what I mean? And and I think that's good. I just want to encourage you to love everything you're doing. All of you, it's so important to kind of always think of the beautiful things you can do on the piano. Enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? And just keep doing it. So I just wanted to encourage you and to encourage all of us who are performers that we need to always kind of love and think of the things we like to or that we did in our performance you know and we are all our own worst critics you know I could have done this better I could have done that I was he's looking at every single thing I'm doing and then you just start getting out of yourself this is what I'm saying so I just want to bring us back to that place where this is a very beautiful piece that I think you are really enjoying and I just want you to acknowledge to all of us the beautiful things you're doing to and we want to honor that okay that's good so in my understanding and my experience of your piece I love the way you were really trying to create the melodies and creating these beautiful lines you know and accompaniment figures and then the contrasting sections and i kind of i kind of want to encourage and get more of that out of you okay and this piece says reverie the reverie is also like dream all right it's good. No, no, no. It's okay. Don't. No. All right. It's reverie, right? And and it's a night piece, right? And so it's also got the whole idea of moonlight going on, melancholic. It all applies to this, right? And so I want, and so because of the dreamlike you know, thing about it. Can you make this 
just a little bit lighter and almost unanchored, you know, so let's see. Let me put the pedal down. Can, can you give me a little bit of a sway with your ring? you to go a little faster have you noticed yeah let's try just a little bit faster and i think it's even going to be it's going to help you ready and The better it gets, the pickier I get. Okay? So you gave me at the beginning. second no can you match the decay this is what I mean so it feels like a two note slur let's try that yeah it's terrible being asked to play it in the middle of a piece no, no, no. the first one has to be heavier and then the idea yes do you see what I mean it's so that you're really consistent with that with that two note slur all over the place does that make sense you know and good so let's see where else let's go from here somewhere how about here is that Actually, do, do set this up because I want to hear this melody. Why don't you go from somewhere you're comfortable playing? See how you did that. 
I didn't get that from your playing. and I want an 11 in terms of expression even more to get you to move it a little bit more and I think the, the reason why it isn't happening like I want it to happen is you're allowing your right hand to kind of keep time do you see what I mean and, and it's holding back that beautiful melody that you want to bring out so your beautiful melody that you want to bring out is getting a little vertical and a little uh, it's not moving it's not being directed because you're, you're going da, da, de, da, de, da, da. you're keeping time and it's great but the melody wants right it just wants to go the way you just kind of sang it to me so let your left hand lead the right hand can we try that? Let your left, left hand lead the right hand. Orchestra playing this. I want you to let's say orchestrate it. You understand what I mean by orchestrate? So what's going to be on the top line? What first instrument? Violins. Hmm? First violins. First violins. Second line. Second violin. Hmm. Okay. Third. Viola. And cello. So you're thinking just strings? I'm a string player. Ah, yes! <laughs> I forgot. Okay, so, all right. You being a string player, you know first violins like to have the spotlight all the time, right? I want you to create that. I want string quartet. Smooth lines, and I want the balance of what a string quartet would be playing. Top line, forte, other lines, mezzo piano to piano. up the 
coming a bit. and come back. You see what I mean? to piano playing, you know, and if you're a singer, you bring all that wonderful vocal stuff to, to your piano playing. I like to try and imitate singers, I like to try and imitate other instruments, you know. It's very important, that's going to add to that beautiful stuff you're doing. Do you see what I mean? Did you like that though? You did. You're not singing it just because you. Nothing. All right. So, <laughs> so anyhow, um, that's what I want to hear in this section: strings. Okay. And and really try and make them legatissimo. Connect fingers as much as you can. You know. And even though it may have these little things here. You may want to make a difference here. There are certain places where, you know, it's just like totally that or portato. What what do strings do with their portatos? You know, uh, uh, uh. you know. I'm professing a little bit of ignorance here, but <laughs> but this is what I mean. Okay, and then finally, just a section. You have that melody and the left hand. And I wanted to applaud you on that. That was beautiful. But I want to hear more movement. You don't let those eight notes, let the melody control it. Okay. Faster. I want to like open my eyes and say, oh no, he, he doesn't have three hands. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to hear it as a two pan and you're having to do all that kind of stuff. Because I'm here, ba -da -da -da, pee -da -da -da, you know, with all of that going on in the middle. Do you see what I mean? I just want that melody to just reign supreme and I just I don't care how you do it, but I don't want to know that you're making that, that those arrangements. Let the music rule. One more time. One, two, three, and. stop here I could go on and on and you know because I'm just having so much fun with all three of you but um, I just want to say that you know that's what's been so fun working with you is how you all you know work so hard to try to make adaptations on the spur of the moment it's not an easy thing and so I applaud all three of you 
for all the work you've done. And I hope you get something out of this and you can take something interesting, you know, back to your practice room and your practicing. So one, I'm just going to ask, what are you going to, what do you think you're going to take away from just this little conversation we've had? to bring out the entire idea of music from the piano by connecting other parts of the musical world that I've explored and bringing them here and expressing it. Absolutely brilliant answer. Yes, you bring everything that you have to your piano playing. You bring, you know, all kinds of information if you're a bass guitarist, if you're a singer, if you play the drums, if you string play, you know, bring all that wonderful information into your music making. It's all music and the piano is just another instrument that becomes an extension of your body. So this piece of, ins you know, wood and metal and whatever, is nothing until you put your hands to it and then it becomes a lie because it's you. You see what I mean? So bring all your information to it, okay? All the time, all right? All the time. And so I'm just so glad all of you have come up with these wonderful answers and wonderful ideas you've taken on and just keep doing that, okay? I'm just thrilled. So, um, and thank you for listening to my my stuff here. Okay. So I think we need to applaud these three fabulous people.